How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sunday Night Heat, the WWE News and Rumor Show right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP or available on the Spreaker app and all Android and Apple devices. When it is finished, the episode will be posted on Spreaker and on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash nhbwr itunes and stitcher radio you can follow this podcast on twitter facebook and instagram by searching no holds barred wp be sure to head over to youtube and spreaker channel and give us a subscribe and hit that bell icon for all upload updates i am your host of the sunday night heat kyle masters the self-proclaimed grace host i am not alone today usually i do the sunday night heat alone but i am joined by my corporate co-host via skype and that is Corporate Cappy. Hey yo. Hey yo. Finally, you got, got you on a Sunday night heat. I think the last one was the Superstar Shakeup. Yeah, I think so. Uh, we got. But it's because it's because it's Battleground predictions. So. Oh yeah, we're gonna do our Battleground predictions right before we do the news and rumors, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we got in the chat here, Greg. What's going on? We got HR Leah. We got a new person in the chat. What's going on, HR Leah? Her Miz, I think it's a girl. Miz impression, awesome. <laughs> cool, this works for the live show. And Mason Dunbar just joined. What's going on, Mason? Oh, Mason Storm. Mason Storm in his podcast. What's going on? So yeah, we'll get into the battle. I think we'll do the battleground predictions first. I was gonna say we can do it at the end of the show, but uh, now we'll get off get off the bat. Oh, it's Harold. It's Harold. Ah, from Twitter. What's going on, Harold? Ah. Okay. All right. Got so, it. Harold, I totally forgot I'm doing brand via Skype. I, I'm pretty sure there's a way to do a three-way Skype. We'll try it out later, but first we're going to do the Battleground predictions, and I'll figure out how to do that so you can chit-chat with us for a bit and see if it works. I've actually never done a three-way Skype on uh, Skype before. That's different. Three-way call. Yeah. I got All enough right. before we get into the predictions. I have a, uh, I got found a really, really good deal. Uh, through eBay on a really, really good microphone that's usually worth around 80 to $100 on Amazon, and I got it for 50 bucks on eBay. How crazy is that? Well, what's, it, wrong, with, what's wrong with your mic? I'm just, it's like, it's a, it's a professional microphone, basically. Mm. I, couldn't I couldn't pass up on it. I've been actually looking at it for like six months now, and when I saw I can get it for 60 bucks, I'm like, I got to jump all over that. Actually, a couple of our podcasts that we listen to actually use the same mic, so it's going to be actually pretty cool when it comes. Ooh. Can't wait for yeah, it. I hope, Mason, I hope Battleground is decent. Yeah, I'm not I'm not getting my hopes up. Yeah, Mason, speaking of Battleground, I don't know, man. they they got to compete with, uh, what is it, uh, Game of Thrones tonight. I don't know if, the, I don't know if uh, the Rock Show Ballers is a competition for WWE. I don't know if they consider that competition. <laughs> but... I've never ever yeah. watched Ballers. I, I haven't either. I heard, I heard it's it's an okay show. I mean, The Rock's in it. It's got to be somewhat funny. But, um, yeah, there should be a couple new episodes coming up on the podcast, a couple unboxings. Mm -hmm. I unboxed my package yesterday, but I have to get the video over to you somehow, so that might take a while. And you got one coming in the mail, too. Yeah, I, I've, I've read, read into the, the blue snowball mic there, uh, Harold. But uh, this, apparently this one's better. I've done. I've seen a lot of reviews on it. It's actually the audio. It's called Audio Technica ATR twenty one hundred, and for Canadians, it's not. It, it's not cheap. So I when I was able to get it fifty Canadian, I had to jump all over that. So what the hell is the guy selling it so cheap for? I don't know. Uh, it was brand new in box, and this guy owns this. Uh, the eBay owner. He's he's verified. He's got all good reviews. He owns an electronics store, so it's not like he's just selling it from his house. It's from his mm. store. So. And it comes oh. with a two-year warranty, so. Is that I feel like I need to send it back. He'll give me my money back. I feel like I want my money back for freaking Battleground tonight, even before it starts. <laughs> Speaking of, so, uh, one of the big things I want to talk about first when we get into the, when we get into the predictions here is Darby is teasing Brazongo are finally within arm's length, quote unquote of discovering the identity of their attackers, and apparently, according to the storyline, they have received a break in the case that points to resolution at this pay-per-view tonight. Hmm. Mm. 
Look at this in the chat. What's, more, what's more interesting is Michael Chow's on his way to Taco Bell. He, to grab breakfast at Taco Bell? They Man. have breakfast at Taco Bell? Jesus. Oh, well, you know, Michael uh, Michael Chow, uh, hopefully it's not a... Uh, I need to upset your stomach. I don't know. I, up here. Sorry, go ahead. I, I never seen breakfast for taco bell up here in canada did we did we do we have breakfast for taco bell up here i don't know is it going to be as gross as their dinner <laughs> uh anyways mason yeah this is not a bad thing you're missing uh, battleground tonight yeah um so what we think it's going to be harper and rowan yeah literally all, all signed signed point. to that yeah unless we get some two random singles guys put together to make no sense which we've seen before mm-hmm um, I'm gonna miss pay per view tonight too. It sucks. I couldn't get it off work. But I'm I wish gonna... I had an excuse to miss it. But this is a pay per view where I'm like, uh, not upset. No. I, I'm not upset at missing. Is what I'm trying to get at. I wouldn't be either. In the chat here at the same time. I'm trying to get my words out. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't. I'm trying to find an excuse not to watch it. Um. It's going to be Harper and Rowan. They're not going to do a surprise factor. I highly doubt with everything that's going on tonight, TV wise, and the risk of not getting a lot of viewers, they're not. It's not going to be like AOP that like people think it is, or uh, sanity, or sanity. It, it's going to be Harper and Rowan. They're not doing anything right now. They need to get back on TV. And whether this is a one-off thing or they start a feud, whatever it is, what it is. But um, I'm going to go with. Uh, Brazongo in this one for some reason. And I got a gut feeling. <laughs> even even though it's it's Luke Harper and Rowan, they need to get back into it and look dominant. For some reason, I see Brazongo coming out with the win. I don't know why. I just do. Because it's something they could I do. I don't. I'm going with Eric Rowan and Luke Harper, if, if it is them. <laughs> uh, I feel bad for Luke Harper. Remember his, like, he was supposed to get a singles push in that Orton and Bray Wyatt feud, and then he just disappeared. Yeah, and then they kind of repackaged uh, Eric Rowan <laughs> to oh like this God. clown, that, that, that clown kind of thing where his mask was painted like a clown. He's giving balloons to, to kids and then popping them. <laughs> Why do we see that on TV, man? It reminded me of It, the clown. I just don't want any any remembrance of that movie. Yeah. Okay, you'll go with them. I'll go with Brazongo. I'm, not, I'm just going with my gut. For some reason, I think Brazongo is going to pull it off. And it's just going to be like a one-off thing. <laughs> yeah, Michael Child saying Fashion Files are so popular you don't need to win. Yeah, I know. I, I just, it's just a gut thing, you know. Watch them win. Watch them. I'm, I, watch them win. I don't even know if I what I picked in uh, Gamma Gamma New One's uh, little uh, pick em thing he's doing. Oh. I picked Brazongo. I don't know. All right. Well, we'll get on to the matches that are announced. Kickoff. Let's we'll start with the kickoff. The oh, pre-show. man. Yeah, great kickoff. The perfect pre-show. <laughs> Michael Chow saying it's the Ascension, by the way. <laughs> the Ascension again. I wouldn't doubt it, Michael Chow. Uh, but the pre-show. My God. Again, we're going to get Aiden English and Ty Dillinger for the, the fucking 800th time. Who cares? Who cares? Well, Dillinger's winning. Whatever. <laughs> like, I honestly, I could sit here and say that I hope Ty Dillinger goes on to better things and they actually find something for Aiden English, but I don't care because if you're going to keep feeding me the same bull crap, I just don't want to talk about it. Like, where did this come from all of a sudden? I thought we were done with this feud last pay-per-view pre-show. I don't understand. It's it, This is literally there to be, like, trying so hard not to cover up their laziness. <laughs> like, it, this is showing their laziness right here in, in the kickoff match. Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Uh... Let's go with Sami Zayn and Mike Kanellis. So they're having their rematch. I really wish they weren't having a rematch here. I really wish this was like the first match. I really like. I I, I would have hoped that they would have waited past a SmackDown had Mike Kanellis face someone else, face Sin Cara. I mean, Sin Cara is a stepping stone, right? Mike Kanellis needs to make a name for himself. Should have been Sin Cara, right? <laughs> exactly. Why is Sin Cara not on TV lately? Like. <laughs> To get past him, then that makes you look credible on SmackDown Live. I mean, got everybody... nice, he's got some nice new uniforms, right? He's got He's been showing them off on Twitter and Instagram, his, his nice uh, ring attires. But why don't we get to see it on TV, man? 
Well, Dolph Ziggler, like, is supposed to be look credible against his feud with Nakamura by beating Sin Cara. And yeah. then we haven't seen Dolph Ziggler in, like, a month and a half. So maybe Sin Cara is actually the cancer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. He did change his suit to black, so maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, Sami Zayn, Mike Nellis. Uh... I'm going with Mike Bennett. Yeah, Mike Bennett. I, I think he's going to get another win over Sammy. Another, I think it's going to be another dirty win. I yeah. think Sammy's going to have to fight for that one win to get against him. Yeah. Sin is too short for TV. <laughs> Nobody's too short for TV if Hornswoggle was on it. Um, yeah, Mike Mike Bennett. I, I'm not calling him Mike Canellis. He's Mike Bennett. I don't well, care about this but, terrible but the power, It's the power of love, man. Gimmick's trash. You gotta okay? believe in the power it's of garbage. love. It's garbage. It's so bad. Like, why don't they just put Maria in the women's division? Heaven forbid we could use another credible woman in there. You just don't believe the power of love. No, I don't believe the power of trash gimmicks. <laughs> God. All right, we're gonna move on from that. Uh, did, you, did you pick somebody? I pick uh, Mike Canales. I agreed. I can't see Sami Zayn winning in this case. I, I honestly see Maria getting involved once again. Or I can also see if Sami Zayn actually winning, but Maria tries to interfere and the referee kicks her out. But then as she's getting kicked out, Sami Zayn's distracted, and that's how Mike Canales picks up the victory. Like we were saying on the loadout show, I don't understand why they didn't just save his debut for the pay-per-view. Like, why do we care that this match is on pay-per-view? When right. it's not even his debut match. Like, who cares? Why is this on pay-per-view? Hmm. That's Anyways. actually a good prediction, Michael Chow. Uh, yeah. He says that Daniel... He, they, hashtag Michael Chow Creative. They'll pull a Daniel Bryan, AJ Lee repeat. Mike kisses Maria and turns into a halluva kick in a five-second match. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that'd be hilarious, man. Um... Let's talk about the five-way elimination match. Winner will face Naomi at Sma- or for the SmackDown Women's Championship at SummerSlam. Flair, Lynch, Natalia, Tamina, and Lana. And as of last night, Charlotte Flair was the uh, odds favored to win this match. Apparently, overnight there was a shift. There was a huge shift in the betting odds for this match, and it now has Natalia as the favorite to win this match. Oh my God. Two paws. Yeah, I can actually see that happening, man. I even picked Charlotte, too. Then all uh, our picks, like, with our buddies and then with Gam. I picked Charlotte, and I'm regretting my pick now. The betting odds have shifted. I can actually see Natalia winning now. I'm still going with Becky Balboa. You think Becky Lynch, really? Yep. I can't see a one-on-one match with Naomi, though. They're both faces. So? See it's, face not face match it's, not, it's not going to happen. For the SmackDown Women's title... And how crappy they're booking the women's division lately. No, it's not going to happen. Oh, it could be a perfect opportunity for Carmella it's to cash not, in. And it's not. It's going to be Charlotte Flair. She's going to turn heel. Or even I can see Natalia because she's still a heel. It's going to be heel versus face. It's not going to be Becky. It's not going to be. Hell, it's not going to be Tamina. Heaven forbid. <laughs> I, mean, I, I originally had a gut feeling that Lana was going to escape <sighs> and win again. She's going to hide out the entire match and then sneak in and then win a quick roll up. They could do that, honestly. But then, this, how pissed would people be if Lana wins again? This is probably the only match that I really just want to see the outcome of because it's an elimination match. I want to see like how they how they go about it. Yeah, what it be the final two? Like I'd love to see. It's probably be, in my mind, good booking would be Charlotte and Becky be the last two. Yeah, or they forget about Lana or somebody hiding underneath the ring, and then they come in after and steal it. You, that's what I mean. Can you imagine Lana doing that? Like, she like, <laughs> absolutely wrecks Becky, and then she turns into, like, a roll-up by Lana, and she ends up winning. Do we need to see Lana again? Like, clearly, they don't have faith in her wrestling ability. Look what she did the first two times in her matches against Naomi. Well, I I, I think she has wrestling ability, but again, I like I said before, I think she's just playing the role that... Even Marie was supposed to play, like show no wrestling ability, just be a, a dunce in the ring. And how she's agreeing to this is beyond me. I would never agree to this, but I think that's what we're getting here. I actually picked Charlotte going out like first in our predictions as like a shocker thing. Yeah, it's funny you say that, Mason, in the chat. There's a lot of rumors saying that Nikki Bella was going to return at SummerSlam. So <laughs> I don't know how you fit Nikki Bella in if someone comes out of this as the winner. It, it it would it would only make sense if this there was no contest in this in this match and then Nikki Bell returns on SmackDown this coming Tuesday which it won't happen because I don't think she's ready to come back yet so 
I don't know. I don't know what to do with Nikki Bell. Maybe Nikki Bell comes out and, and says she challenges the winner, whoever wins the title. You know, like John Cena style. She says, I'll, I I face the winner, whoever wins the title at SummerSlam. You get automatic title shot for coming back. Oh, automatic title shot. What else is new? Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> yes, Michael Chow, that's, that's, that's what I said. I think if Charlotte will be eliminated first as a surprise factor. No, that won't happen. I'm well, you have your prediction. I have my prediction. You picked <laughs> you picked Brazongo to beat whoever the returning tag team is. It so. could happen. So Mac, so could Becky. Nah, that's, I think it's a little bit less likely. Okay, well if if it happens, <laughs> then you can buy me a Sin Cara mask as my prize. Oh man, I might buy one for myself, man. Those are legendary. Get them while they're hot. So yeah. I'm going with Becky, and I think Charlotte gets eliminated first. So there it is. I'm going with Charlotte, and I think. Uh... Two Tamina, paws get eliminated. Tamina gets eliminated first. They all pin her at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking dog pile in the middle of the you ring. Just, what, do you, what do you got against Tamina, man? <laughs> she's not going to win. She's not. She's bodyguard material, man. Whatever whatever role she's playing right now, it's perfect for her. Okay. She can't be a credible champ. You can't sit there and, and, and look at the title and, and picture it on Tamina, picturing her to be a credible champion. Better than Lana. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I can agree with you with that. Um, let's talk about the United States Championship, which is basically the main match of this entire card because no one gives a fuck about the WWE title and the <laughs> goddamn Punjabi prison match. Great match. Um, so we'll talk about the U.S. title. AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens, except it's bluntly obvious that Styles is going to win this match. Duh. Right. Hashtag duh. And they're going to continue with his open challenge in the next coming weeks. So, I think they can still, still be a good match. This, they can still put up a good 12, 15-minute match, man. Both these guys are awesome wrestlers. So, at least we'll get a good match out of it. We know who's going to win. Maybe Kevin Owens gets himself disqualified. Who knows? But AJ Styles is winning in this one for sure. Yeah, I mean, Styles has to win because they got to move on to his feud at SummerSlam, which it doesn't look like it's going to be against Owens. So, so yeah, it, it'll be... I think it'll just be a good one-off match, like something that will be better than Joe and Lesnar's one-off match. It'll be definitely, it'll be up there. I think it'll be a really good match. I got uh, high hopes for this match. Okay. Uh, Nakamura, Corbin. I'm still going with my boy Corbin, man. He's going to pull it off. I think this is going to be Nakamura's first pay-per-view loss. Uh, I don't think so. I think Corbin has the money in the bank. He can take a loss here. Nakamura wins. Ah, I t- they usually do that with the money in the bank guys. They usually lose all the way up to cashing in. I don't want this paper to be too predictable, so I'm going to stick with Corbin. Okay. Well, I, he's going to win dirty. We'll he's not going to win clean, man. He, the referee is going to be distracted or something. He's going to hit Nakamura in the head with the briefcase, and then that's how he's going to win. Okay. That's just my guess. Uh, to the glorious flag match, Rusev versus John Cena. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Why the hell have we seen this goddamn match again? <laughs> we already seen this feud going into WrestleMania 31. Literally, it's the same goddamn feud. John Cena being all about the USA. Rusev being all about Bulgaria. Well, back then it was Russia. Now it's Bulgaria. Like, god damn, what the hell, man? Why the fuck do we need to see this again? Who cares about this feud? It's a flag match now. <laughs> it's so bad. This is terrible. I don't care. I would love if this was the pre-show match or the first car, first match on the cards. So you can get away with, just get it over with. Someone say glorious. Yeah. Okay, Greg. Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with Cena. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Exactly to what uh, Harold said in the chat. Uh, the question is, will WWE let the American flag touch the floor? Probably not. I'd love for Rusev to get a win here, though. Rusev needs a big win, man. This is, is him coming back after being gone for so long. It almost feels like he should get a big win. So, uh, God, I'll just go with Super Cena. Why not? USA. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, move on to it's probably going to be the main event, most likely. You know, WWE tries to portray their championship as the main title on SmackDown, and it's not. To me, the U.S. title is the main title on SmackDown, and the WWE Championship is the Meyer title, which is sad, because it shouldn't be. But we got a Punjabi prison match. We all know how good those were in the past, so why not have one in 2017? With the two most boring people in the WWE. 
do we have crickets? Yeah, uh, I actually do have that sound effect. So whenever Jinder Mahal and, and Randy Orton talk, this is what I hear. Yes, crickets, that sound. That's what I hear. <laughs> When Jinder Mahal and Randy Orton talk, they're so boring. Both of them have no personality, no like oomph in their talking. Man, there's nothing like, oh, I'm the Viper. I'm going to RKO you. This might be the most boring feud of all time. And then freaking you have Jinder Mahal, who only gets excited when he when he says the word Punjabi. Randy Orton, I'm going to beat you in the Punjabi prison match. <laughs> He just and then starts talking to his people. Yeah, I different language. Care. And then they brought the SmackDown. That just lost all like hype you had for that match. Why the hell did you need to bring it to SmackDown? Who cares? Leave it for the pay per view. You just gave it away. Basically, you didn't do anything physical. You just gave away half the fucking nostalgia for this match. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. But Mahal is pretending. No way Randy Orton is becoming the WWE champion going into SummerSlam. There's no fucking way. <laughs> it's going to be Jinder no. Mahal. Singh brothers are going to get involved somehow. They're going to hold Randy Orton down when he's trying to climb out or something. And, and Jinder Mahal is going to win. Cool. You think Corbin cashes in on him? No. I don't think this is... Everyone's saying this is a perfect moment for cashing. It's not happening, guys. It's way too early for cashing. Way too early. You're looking at cash, and you got to look at a big pay-per-view where Darby knows its viewers are going to be watching. It knows where they're going to get the ratings, and that's either SummerSlam, Survivor Series, or Roy Rumble. Something you, like that. And you got to get Corbin big heat because he's a heel. So cashing in on Jinder Mahal would make no sense. You're not you're not going to get him cashing tonight. No way, shape, or form is going to happen. I could see a SummerSlam, maybe even up to Survivor Series. There hasn't been cash-ins at Survivor Series ever. So the Survivor looks like a likable place. Or you might see a minor title in between, or a minor pay-per-view in between them. Right now, I think it's too early. I don't think it's going to happen. No, I think he's going to carry it on for a while. Yep. Um, oh, yeah, we forgot about the tag team match. Oh, yeah, the tag team match. How come I don't have it written down here? Strange. Because uh, the Usos are winning, that's why. Yeah, because it was a... Uh, Oh man, I have for I have this like gut feeling that they want New Day to go into SummerSlam with the tag team title. So I'm gonna pick New Day. I got this weird feeling that they they can do something going into it with the tag team title. So I'm gonna go with New Day in this one. I think the Usos are gonna drop into New Day. I think Usos get another cheap win somehow, and I think they lose the titles to New Day at SummerSlam. That'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. So, Should be a good match though. I mean, Usos are a really good tag team. New Day. Better talkers and wrestlers, in my opinion, but they're still all right. Hey, that Xavier Woods singles finishing move was insane two weeks ago. That was crazy. So, yeah, I'll go with the Usos to retain, and you're going with New Day to win the titles. Yeah, it should be an okay pay-per-view. Don't expect anything big out of it. There's going to be no surprise cash-ins from any of the winners. I don't think it's going to be – I don't think it's going to be fast lane bad, but it might be payback bad. <laughs> I love how we're basing it off the other bad papers that have happened this, this yeah, Like, nothing's going to be as worse as Fastlane. That is, like, setting the bar the lowest it can possibly go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so we'll see. I'm going to miss it because i got to work. I'm going to be catching it when I get home from work at midnight. I'll, wa- I'll skip through and watch the matches I want to watch. Then I'll watch the highlighted highlights for the other matches. And then uh, maybe I'll do a review tomorrow. Maybe I won't. We'll see. Uh, Don't waste your time. <laughs> yeah, but the people ask for reviews. People want to know. Who wants to review this show? <laughs> Who cares? It's a great pay per view. It might be the best one of the year. Yeah. If it's the best pay per view of the year, then Sin Cara is the next WWE champion, okay? Hey, you never know, man. What well, if they have like a tournament this Tuesday and Sin Cara becomes number one contender? I'll throw I mean, again, off. If Jinder Mahal can be WWE champion, then why not Sin Cara? <laughs> you know, he claims that there's going to be a 3 MB reunion. He came out you know, yesterday on like a new show or something, and he said that they're going to be there's going to be a three MB reunion. Yeah, they're all gonna they're all gonna be champions one day, and they'll all get back together at the same time. Maybe Drew McIntyre wins the NXT title at Brooklyn, and they have like a backstage thing. <laughs> they show like Heath Slater meeting up with Drew McIntyre and Jinder, and they both have titles, and he doesn't. <laughs> they kind of make fun of Heath Slater for used to being the leader. <laughs> True. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so battleground i'm expecting a solid mm, 
three and a half out of ten. You're gonna you think it's three out of half? Oof, that's a low ass score for a pay per view. <laughs> It's gonna be trash, but we'll hopefully, see. hopefully they prove me wrong. Hopefully they do something big. Like I don't think cash and big, but they do something that will get some viewers to t- you know tune out of Game of Thrones, which is hard because Game of Thrones is really big, and a lot of people have been waiting for this season premiere. So I don't know. It'll be tough, man. It's a tough yeah. thing to compete with tonight. I'm hoping they do something interesting in the women's match. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. Right. <laughs> Michael Chubb, Drew wins. He's beating Lesnar. <laughs> Oh, that'd be freaking hilarious. Oh, man. Anyways, that's it for the Battleground predictions, guys. We hope you like them, as always. Um, Let's get into the news, and we're going to start off with that headline music. God, I love that music. I love that, that song, that headline song. Signifies the beginning of the news, and that's what this is: the Sunday Night Heat, the rumors and news show for WWE, and then a week's worth of news and rumors. I think that's the longest reigning, uh, like music we have on the on the podcast. I think so, because we've had it for a long time. We will continue to have it, no matter. We will always be there, some some capacity. Yeah. And he's uh, oh. Leah says, this is the best review podcast ever. I need every match detail review, please. <laughs> we'll see. I might do it. I might do it on Monday night. Or Monday night. Monday uh, Monday around Monday noontime. Around. Same time as today. Uh, anyways, getting to the news. Luke, getting off track here. Uh, John Cena explains why he returned as a free agent. So we got an explanation from Mr. Cena. As Great. To why. John Cena was recently interviewed by Complex in order to promote the new Tap Out body spray line. <laughs> mm. Which you saw at the yeah. Walmart went to yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Cena spoke on a wide variety of topics about both his wrestling and movie careers. One of the topics of the interest for wrestling fans was when Cena spoke about his free agent status in the WWE. After returning for the first time... It- to the WWE since WrestleMania 33, Cena is now able to appear on both Raw and SmackDown Live as he pleases. Cena says that this is his decision to be a free agent and explains why with this statement. The reason I wanted to be a free agent and the reason they kind of granted my request is because I don't know if it'll be I'll be available for SmackDown specific only or Raw specific only, and I also know that my days are numbered. I just turned 40 in April, and we have... So many young and talented performers, I don't how, know how many le- years I have left. So in the time I have left, I'm going to do what I can to dedicate to this company. I just want to be able to do it most of the time that I possibly can. Or in the most time that I possibly can. Since returning, Cena has been appearing on SmackDown Live exclusive in terms of there to be television. We saw the first glimpse of free agent Cena on July 16th when he appeared as a surprise and defeated Bray Wyatt. At the Lexington live event, this was a Raw exclusive show. Hmm. So I could respect that. Cena basically saying, like, you know, he's old, he's had his time, and he's got there's young and talented people coming up, and he wants to give them more room, and he wants to work with a lot of them on specific dates, and if he's a free agent, he's able to go on Raw and SmackDown and work with those specific people, whoever they get called up to. And I guess he does have a pretty busy schedule now, so he can't always be available on a Monday or a Tuesday. So, yeah, I mean... Good for him, I guess. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll agree with that. I, I can respect that. Yeah, as much as you're on Cena. Yeah, it, it is a respectable move. Mm-hmm. Although, why the hell would they just wrap him to SmackDown in the first place? Like, made no sense. Yeah, Michael Chow needs to bury as many young talent. <laughs> I think this also opens the door to a future Cena and Reigns feud. That way they don't have to draft one to the other show. I honestly think Great. we're going to Reigns Cena sometime. You know it's going to happen. You know that WWE is going to think in the back of their minds, like, hey, we need to think of a better way to pass a torch than Brock Lesnar to Reigns. Cena would be the perfect guy to do it, even though I still don't think he's the top guy. But whatever. You know it's going to happen regardless, so we'll see. Um, But, yeah, I can give respect to John Cena for that. Uh, Next news. Rumors on when Jason Jordan found out about his story, his angle storyline. The storyline everybody has been talking about over the past few days is Jason Jordan being revealed as Kurt Angle's illegitimate son on Raw. 
Before the announcement, fans were heavily speculating on on Angle's big secret or what or what big Angle's big secret could be, with many wild theories emerging. Yes, we saw a lot of uh, wild theories. Uh, so when did Jason Jordan find out that he would be part of such a big storyline? Here's the latest on the topic at hand. According to Dave Meltzer in the, in the latest Wrestling Observer, Observer newsletters, Jason Jordan found out about the storyline with Kurt Angle the week before Raw. There has also been some previous indications a few weeks ago that American Alpha were going to get a new storyline on SmackDown Live. As we know now, this was scrapped and the team has officially split up. If this accurate, if this is accurate and Jordan did find out last week, did RWB change the original plans for the big reveal? Or is it possible that they simply waited until the time was right to share the news with Jordan? We will have to wait for more information to come and light to say definitely. Uh, the storyline has plenty of possibilities moving forward. According to a recent report, the storyline will be a long-term thing and one of the main focuses on Raw over the next few months. So kind of, I honestly think, and I, I told you this last night, they, they, they're second-guessing Roman Reigns, and they kind of, maybe they think Jason Jordan is the next face of the company. Maybe they see the potential in this guy. I mean, the guy's crazy athletic, but I, I don't know. He's gonna He's got to improve with his mic skills, though, because he's... It's pretty yeah. stale in that regard. Maybe they're working on it. You never know. They could be working yep. on it. Um, so I got some other news I actually got late last night in terms of this storyline. Does Derby want Jason Jordan to have a mother involved in the storyline? One of the biggest questions that fans have, have after the big reveal was, who is the mother? If Angle is Jordan's father, who is the mother in all of this? In the post-Raw interview last week, Angle mentioned that the mother is a very private person. It looks like, according to the new report, that this could be a big hint about the future of the character. According to Ryan Satin of the latest edition of the Sheet podcast, there are currently no plans for WWE to introduce Jason Jordan's mother as a character on television. As mentioned by Satin earlier, the Angle and, the, the, the Angle and Jordan storyline will be one of the main focal points on Raw over the next few months. It appears that the storyline will only focus on the father-son relationship and will feature nothing involving a mother moving forward. So we're not going to get any mother. So for those out there asking about who's the mother, are we going to get the mother on TV soon? It doesn't look like it. We're going to get any of that. It's just going to mainly focus on Jason Jordan and Kurt Angle's father-son relationship. Hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm more interested in what the hell they're going to do with Chad Gable now. Right? Is he going to get like a mid-card feud on SmackDown or is he just going to get buried? <laughs> I hope not because that guy's an incredible talent too. Yeah, right? So I don't know what's going to happen here. But as for Jason Jordan, I'm, okay, I'm glad they're not bringing a whole mother into this thing because that would just be yeah, like... Weird. I think that would ruin it too. It would be I, such like... Oh, they need to soap step opera. Up. They need to step up what they, they've been building for this because it still feels lackluster from what they were talking about. So hopefully they have some stuff planned. Like, does Kurt Angle instantly give him like a mid-card title shot? Yeah, the, the people questioning his uh, his judgment. Maybe this is something that's going to tie into Stephanie coming back. They're going to think that either he's giving all the opportunities to his son and not, you know, talent that deserves it. And it's kind of questioning uh, and clouding Kurt Angle's judgment in terms of being a professional. So we'll see. Hmm. Um, oh. We want some more news here. Current rumors on The Rock being or wrestling at WrestleMania 34. Few via weeks, satellite? Yeah. <laughs> a few weeks ago, a fan tweeted out to, that The Rock versus Seth Rollins was a match that they wanted to see. Rollins responded, tweeting, I mean, Mania is only like eight months away. This caused a bit of a Twitter frenzy with fans thinking we could get a Rock versus Seth at WrestleMania 34. How likely is it that we could see The Rock appear at WrestleMania 34? Here are some of the rumors on the situation. Dave Meltzer was asked about The Rock's status for the event during the mailbag portion of the Wrestling Observer Radio. While he doesn't rule out an appearance, Meltzer says that him wrestling at the event seems like a long shot. Meltzer says the insurance reasons play a big role in The Rock at WrestleMania. The Rock is one of the most in-demand actors in the world right now and has multiple projects on the go at one time. If he was to get hurt, it could jeopardize the films that he is working on. The Rock was... Apparently injured several years ago after his match with John Cena, and it caused setbacks in the film uh, Hercules. 
The Rock's movie career is booming. He was the world's highest paid actor in 2016. It seems unlikely that he would have risk any more risk for film projects in the upcoming future and getting injuries due to a wrestling match. Last time WrestleMania was in New Orleans, The Rock appeared alongside Stone Cold and Hulk Hogan. It would be cool to see The Rock for an appearance at the event, but him wrestling seems very slim. Or we could get another uh, three-second match with Eric Rowan. God. That's still a risk of an injury. You never know. Yeah, Eric Rowan's like, pretty stiff. It would be like, does The Rock bottom wrong and he you know, injures something? <laughs> Does he really need to be there anyway? I don't think he does. No. It, it, to me, like, we we haven't had him for, what, three years now at WrestleMania? No, he was in Dallas, right? Yeah. Dallas the, he had that blowtorch thing. Yeah. So he wasn't that this year's WrestleMania. And he really didn't care, right? He didn't come out. It didn't didn't affect the my WrestleMania viewing at all. So. I think, I think you're really upset. If he shows up, he shows up. If he doesn't, then whatever. I mean, we're going to be there next year, so we'll see. Yeah, I mean, it would be cool to see The Rock, but I'm not going to be sad that he's not there. If it doesn't make sense, then why have him on the show? All right. Uh, next news. Two scenarios for John Cena at SummerSlam. Brian Alvarez on Wrestling Observer Live had some good points about the flag match. He says that he sees two potential outcomes that could lead to a big SummerSlam matches for John Cena. This is the first scenario is that John Cena wins the flag match against Rusev. As a result, Cena would probably move on to something new at SummerSlam, and we would see Rusev get a rematch. Or would have seen... Or we would have seen rematch, Rusev get a rematch. Okay. If this happens, Oliver speculates that Cena could challenge AJ Styles for the United States Championship at SummerSlam. This match was teased on SmackDown Live a few weeks ago, and Styles and Cena went face-to-face. Um... The second scenario is that Cena loses the flag match to Rusev. This would likely see a rematch between the two at SummerSlam. If this happens, Alvarez speculates that Derby could do Nakamura versus Styles at SummerSlam. This match would, or this match was teased on the July 18th episode of SmackDown Live. So this past uh, SmackDown, uh, a wild card scenario could have could be Cena feuding with Jinder Mahal and Summer for the. No, nah, sorry. Cena feuding with Jinder Mahal at SummerSlam for the title. I read that backwards. This would require both Cena and Jinder to win their matches at Battleground. Hmm. Honestly, I could see any. <laughs> I don't want to see Rusev versus Cena again at SummerSlam. Why not? You want to see that again? No. Then why are you asking me if I want to see it again? I think the, I think the casual fans would love that. But we've already seen this feud before. Why can't they just give us new feuds? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, who does Rusev go on to face if he doesn't face Cena, though? Like, realistically, who's he going to face? Uh, AJ Styles for the U.S. title? Like, oh, I don't know what Rusev does after this, man. Maybe he faces Barrett. No, I can't, I, I can't see a feud for Rusev going to SummerSlam. Dolph Ziggler? Ty <laughs> Dillinger? Yeah, Ty Dillinger, waiting for him to get squashed by Rusev. That's great. He'd be the one to defeat Rusev. That'd be a big push for Ty Dillinger. He doesn't Would. Necessarily have to be squashed. Maybe he faces Sami Zayn after he gets squashed by uh, Mike Bennett. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, if Cena wins a U.S. flag match, it makes so much sense for Cena to take on a bigger foreign threat. Yeah, so he goes on to face... Rusev and Lana versus Mike Bennett and Maria Kanellis mixed tag team match. Mixed love tag team match. There you go. The power of love tag team match. <laughs> handsome Rusev. It's oh handsome God. Rusev. Gorgeous. The return of handsome Rusev. <laughs> I really hope that Cena goes on to face Jinder. It only makes sense. Like, who's Jinder going to face after Orton anyway? Realistically. Uh, yeah, I can't tell you that. Randy Orton again? No, I think Orton's taking some time off. I think, so SmackDown is going to get interesting after Battleground, basically, because every feud is going to change now going to SummerSlam. Well, we hope so. We hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to see what happens. Um, Brie Bella teases WWE return. Oh, man. While appearing at San Diego Comic-Con, Brie Bella participated in a panel that featured other female WWE superstars and talked about the birth of her daughter, Birdie. Birdie Bella. Birdie Joe. Birdie Joe. <laughs> or is it, would it be Birdie Danielson? Because aren't they married? No, oh, it's Birdie Joe Danielson. Oh. 
Birdie Joe Danielson. All right, Birdie Joe. Anyways, uh, Brie also spoke briefly about making her return to the WWE. Brie mentioned that she will be starting training soon, and Daniel Bryan will be her coach as she prepares to make her WWE comeback. She said that the plan on having a ring build at her house and her target is in-ring return will be sometime next year. Wow, she's coming back? Yeah, and they're building a ring at her house. I mean, they have the money to do it. It's got to be full vegan, though. Yeah. It's got um, ropes made of hay and, I don't know, stuff like that. I don't know. Free mode! Oh, God. <laughs> can she get a new theme song? Uh, can we not hear that again? This, that's cringe right there. <laughs> no, it's not going to be Mr. America, Hulk Hogan, Michael Chow. Stop it. That'd be a great match. Maybe Hulk Hogan will remember his clothes this time. God. It'll be, a st- it'll be the stiffest match of all time. Jinder versus Hulk Hogan. Oh my god. It wouldn't last long. It'd be like a minute 50. Hulk Hogan will, will throw someone over. He'll throw the Singh brothers over the top rope. He'll point at the fans and throw them over. Yeah, and then do, do his, his signature stuff, and that'll be it. Great. Hulk wins the WWE title. <laughs> Next. <laughs> uh, Brock Lesnar update. So there's a big update here, and a lot of people are questioning what's going on with Brock Lesnar. Uh, it was reported via Pro Wrestling Sheet yesterday that Brock Lesnar made it clear to WWE officials that he would be re would not be re-signing with the WWE after his contract expires shortly after WrestleMania next year. This doesn't appear to be the case according to the Wrestling Observer. Dave Meltzer indicated on today's installment of the Wrestling Observer Radio, which was yesterday, that the reports of Lesnar leaving WWE once his contract expires to pursue a career in UFC are premature and wouldn't take these reports serious. Meltzer has had has a hard time believing that Brock wouldn't turn down easy money working for WWE at his current age of 40. The belief is that WWE is a better long-term option for Lesnar at his age. In regards to UFC's Jeff Nowitzki shooting down reports that Brock Lesnar has not entered into the USADA drug testing pool, Meltzer said that, that he could enter the pool today and be ready to return for a fight next year if he wanted to. Meltzer does not believe that Lesnar will be fighting in the UFC at the end of this year. Then also hinted a fight early next year wouldn't pan out as well because of the Royal Rumble and the risk of him possibly getting hurt. As far as a possible opponent for Brock, if he does eventually make his UFC return, Meltzer named uh, Stipe Myochik. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And Jun Jones as potential fights. So cracked out Jun Jones against Brock Lesnar. Steroid Lesnar. But uh, he has a point. He wouldn't turn down easy money. Vince is going to throw all kinds of dollar figures at him. He's going to give him another 14 or 13 or whatever it is million a year. And he's going to come back to WWE. He's 40 years old. He's got to think long term. WWE is perfect for him. He can be a part time guy. In UFC, he, that's going to it's going to beat him up. And I'm pretty sure he was forced to retire because of some condition that he had, yeah, right? He had a, yeah, he, had, he didn't get it from the UFC. He just had a condition. It didn't work well with how he was training. And he's better now, and he got rid of it. But still, I don't think he. But he, but he still announced his retirement from UFC like what two years ago? Yeah, yeah. He won't go back. It's, it always happens. I feel like these rumors always happen with Brock Lesnar as soon as his contract comes to an end. They always, oh, yeah. say, oh, he's gonna go back to the UFC. It's, it's everyone just needs to calm down. I don't see him leaving WWE. Maybe he retires in general at the end of his contract after WrestleMania next year. Maybe you know who knows. Maybe he's forty. He Probably still gets like, an in, still gets an endorsement deal and still gets to sell his merch and stuff. He'll go into the Hall of Fame and he'll be get a maybe he'll get a Legends contract. He comes back for a one off match once a year. Who knows. But he's not going back to the UFC. No. i can tell you this right now. All right. Moving on. Rey Mysterio in a possible WWE return. Oh, no. Rey Mysterio was last seen in WWE ring back in 2015. Since his WWE departure, he's been working for a wide variety of promotions, including Lucha Underground and AAA Mexican Wrestling. Before that, Ray had a very, very successful career in the WWE that lasted 13 years and saw him become world champion. If this new report is accurate, WWE fans might get to see him return. According to a report from Justin Barrasso of Sports Illustrated, Ray is currently negotiating with both WWE and Global Force Wrestling at the moment. The report says that Ray's deal with Lucha Underground is set to expire after the show airs in September after his 90-day no-complete-cause 
clause runs out, he will be a free to sign anywhere he wants. So what does this mean? For WWE fans, it means that this could be seeing Ray in late 2017, early 2018, if WWE and Ray are able to work out a deal. This is a far from done deal, but something to keep your eyes on over the next few months. The article mentions WWE having an edge on other promotions because of the WWE Performance Center and Ray son Dominic training to become a wrestler. Some fans have suggested that Ray would be a perfect fit for the 205 Cruiserweight division. It is unclear if WWE would go this route because of his star power and history with the company. Um, I think he would be perfect for 205 Live. He's not. It would gonna... definitely give it some, give it some, you know, credibility. I don't think he has any spot in the main title picture anywhere right now. Maybe on SmackDown or WWE title picture, they run out of champions, but they have too much talent right now and there's talent coming up. So I don't think Rey Mysterio is suitable for a main card in either Raw or SmackDown. I think 205 Live is perfect, and he could be the guy maybe to dethrone, ne- dethrone Neville eventually if they keep the title on Neville going that far into the year. I could definitely see it. it might be... <laughs> Might be make 205 Live watchable again if you put Rey Mysterio back in the division. And you add Enzo Amori in there, and then you, you sign some more cruiserweights from around the world. You, you make it watchable. Again, we say this all the time. We're a broken record. It's got to be moved. It's oh got to be God. moved to Wednesdays, man. It's doing- Michael Chow, enough with the Rey Mysterio reveal this Kalisto <laughs> father. Oh, my God. That's oh, nobody. my God. <laughs> Hashtag Michael Chow creative. God, this sounds like Kevin Dunn took over Michael Chow's oh, account. Don't talk about Bugs Bunny, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, Ray Mysterio, I'd love to see him back in 205 Live. I think that would be really good for the whole Cruiserweight division as a whole. I, uh, I could see him maybe going to Global Force, but man, you, the money is in WWE right now. Don't don't go to those freaking rip-offs, man. <laughs> And with all the merchandise that he could sell in WWE, like... His mask, man. Man, they fly off the shelves. Yeah, unlike the Sin Cara where they go on clearance. <laughs> oh. oh, man. All right. Last bit of news for today, guys. There wasn't, uh, there was, what, nine articles, but I couldn't find any more to read about. Kind of mentioned it here and there before, but that's all right. Uh, Ronda Rousey. Is she on her way to the WWE and a first opponent for her? Some rumors have been flowing around the past few days about Ronda Rousey and the WWE. These rumors suggest that we could not we could not only be seeing her working with the company again, but possibly even wrestling. Ronda appeared at ringside at the Mae Young Classic with Jezemaine Duke and Maria Shafir to watch their friend Shina Balzer compete god i'm botching with these names i apologize these four women are known as the four horsewomen of the mma a video surfaced of rousey and her crew arguing with charlotte becky bailey who are alongside sasha banks also known as the four four horsewomen of the wwe it appears as if they could be really heading into a wwe storyline between the two groups david bixpan in the article for deadspin notes that bailey was scheduled for a raw live event that night but was specifically brought in for the confrontation instead. The confrontation will likely be featured when the Mae Young Classic is released in August. There to be seems to be planting the seeds for something involving Ronda Rousey. So what will it be leading to if Ronda is working with the Derby again? An insider named Rovert at so Do TW on Twitter has broken several wrestling stories in the past. He also suggests that Derby could be building a potential match between Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair. Ooh. Charlotte recently spoke to Noelle Foley for Ringside Collectibles on a WrestleMania match with Ronda Rousey. Charlotte states, well, I would what I have to say that I would still be un, have an undefeated pay-per-view streak, but Bailey crushed that. I would win against Ronda Rousey, and I would show her who is the real force woman, or who are the real four horse women are. Ooh. I think Charlotte would be the one to have a match with Ronda Rousey. That would be a sick match, and I, I could see maybe WrestleMania next year. Charlotte's built like an MMA fighter, basically, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, that would be a cool WrestleMania-type match. Yeah. Um. <laughs> The four horsewomen of MMA versus the four horsewomen of WWE. Like the three at, I don't know. That'd be, I don't know if all of them would be in the same ring together. That'd be <laughs> weird. 
I think Ronda Rousey is more of a wrestling fan than the other ones. Yeah, and th- isn't there like beef between the one cyborg chick and Becky yeah, Lynch? And I doubt the other ones would be at ringside. You can't have Bailey and Sasha and Becky Lynch at a ringside for a WrestleMania match. That makes zero sense. They could all be, yeah, they could all just be watching Charlotte. Like, what? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> or we could just replace Bailey with Alexa Bliss, who really deserves to be the other four horse woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Michael Challenge said they could rename 205 Live to 619. <laughs> Prefer Asuka, but might have a translation problem. <laughs> that is very true. Your English is right. horrible. Kalisto Sincar, Rey Mysterio Stable. <laughs> <laughs> the luchadors <laughs> yeah, and 619 live there you go uh but yeah i mean i think it would be cool at some point to see it i don't know if they take away all the wrestlemania moments for that crap maybe like later down the road when they're all like rousey's near a the end of fan. Career. she's wanted to wrestle in derby for a long time and but this is probably yeah. her her way to do it and this is like her opportunity to do it because i don't think she's going to get the opportunity in the future so and Charlotte's basically the four-time women's champion, right? So, like, she's, like, the probably the biggest woman in the company right now. So, Yeah, for sure. I could definitely see a one-on-one match. I don't know about the 4v4 match. That would be kind of clusterfuck, but... You're taking away from the other people that could have a potential good WrestleMania match in my uh, predicted WrestleMania 34 women's match. And, and if Charlotte doesn't have anything planned on SmackDown, which doesn't look like it's that way, so... Maybe she does face Ronda Rousey. Maybe it's one of those celebrity versus top dog type scenarios like we've had before. That would be cool. That would be cool. I'd love to see that. But at least Ronda can fight. She's not like one of those celebrities where she's just not – she can't do anything. So we'll see. All right, and that, guys. That is going to do it for the news and rumors. Battle of conditions predictions were in the beginning of the show. Um, so stay tuned for some more content on the way as – uh, Corporate Cappy said we got some unboxings on the way in the next coming week. We got uh, the Lowdown Show to look forward to this Wednesday or Thursday. We'll see what happens. Got uh, we got a special podcast yep. we're going to do, a special show. And it's how we would book WrestleMania 34. I think we did this last year at, at some point. We're, we're going to do it again this year. How we would book WrestleMania 30 poor, uh, 34 right now as it stands in the WWE. And I'm going to go over my card. Corporate Cavs can go over his card. And you guys can vote on which card you think is more realistic or which card you like best. You know, that's that'll be a video in the near future. Yeah, near future. Uh, we're still getting it out. And yeah. other than that, there's lots more content to come. So stay tuned. Uh, you want to plug our special for SummerSlam. Yes. Oh, I forgot about that. So this will be the, the first plug. And I'll be starting to plug it from now on. Guys, if you remember and you were listening to the podcast, if not, this is what we do. Uh, back around WrestleMania time, we did a all day podcast called Lowdown in Orlando. So the Saturday before WrestleMania, we did an all day podcast from 10 to 5 p.m. So 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and we did a an entire day podcast. We basically went over Raw, SmackDown, and NXT from that week. Um, it sucked. We wanted to do it at NXT predictions, but the NXT show was the Friday. But this year it works out because it's a Saturday night. So we're gonna do NXT Takeover Brooklyn predictions. We're gonna do SummerSlam predictions. We're going to do some contests and prizes throughout the day on that show. But it's an all-day podcast. Look out for the tweet. I'm going to tweet out later today with the poster. Please retweet it. Share it. Get the word out there. I want to get a lot of viewers to this. And one thing that's going to be different with this one will not be on Spreaker. It will be solely on YouTube Live. We're going to try to get more viewers into this. And it seems like a lot of people like the YouTube Live kind of thing. So we're going to try to get our name out there more with YouTube Live. So... They'll be just YouTube Live, and there's a chat on YouTube that you're able to chat with too, so you can still chat with us while we're doing it on YouTube Live as well. So stay tuned for that. So Lowdown in Brooklyn, it was officially called, and I'll release the poster later today in a tweet. So I'll be plugging that from now on. Mm, it's going to be exciting. Yeah. Our last one was the big hit, so. <laughs> that's a good, that was a lot, man. That took a lot out of us. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And we'll, we're still going to have the Skype calls capped because uh, that, that went overboard last time. But Yeah, we, we, we're going to have them capped this time. So it's probably around 10, 15 minutes. And then we'll see. Well, I want to see how many people we can get in in the Skype calls. Yeah. I want to uh, it may, it it def- get more, too, with, the, with yeah. YouTube Live. So it might just cap it at 10. It definitely won't be an hour long like we were doing last time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be taking our break at around uh, 1, 2 o'clock. Go eat and take a break is a lot, a lot of talking all day, man. <laughs> yeah, sure is. But, guys, that is going to do it and wrap it up for the Sunday Night Heat. 
the WWE News and Rumor Show right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. And as you heard, we had our Battleground predictions in the beginning of the show. We are live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. We are available on the Spreaker app on all Android and Apple devices. When it is finished, this episode will be posted on Spreaker on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash NHBWR, iTunes, and Stitcher Radio. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram by searching No Holds Barred WP. Be sure to head over to YouTube and Spreaker channel to, as well to give us a subscribe and hit that bell icon for all upload updates. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and this episode I am joined by my corporate co-host. He's the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Tappy. Oh, yeah. See you guys next time. Thank you.